A new NFL season is on the horizon. It is cut day around the National Football League. How many quarterbacks are the New England Patriots going to keep? How or which quarterback is going to be named the starter for week number one for the Pats? If there is anybody that can decipher the madness mm. this preseason has brought in the quarterback room for the Patriots in New England, it's George Belecci of Nesson joining us here on this Tuesday on the early line on Sports Grid. Georgie, as always, we thank you for your time. A ton of Patriots conversations come your way here in these next 10 minutes. Donnie, Benny, always great talking with you guys, especially talking the madness that's happening in New England. I'll give a little hint, mm. though. Don't start Drake May because this offensive line sucks. But we'll get into it. Yeah, that's that's yeah. really where it seems to be, George. It was what the thought was entering camp and preseason when Gerard Mayo said Jacoby Brissett is our most pro-ready quarterback. He is going to be number one. And both Donnie and I said, don't point the finger at Drake May when there's so many other issues to let the rookie QB take the hit and the onus from the very start. And then the preseason happened. In all three preseason games, Gerard Mayo elected to play all four quarterbacks for the Pats. It ended on Sunday night in Washington against the Commanders. Jacoby Brissett won possession, was injured. Drake May went out there and looked pretty good. But even after the game, Gerard Mayo had this to say following the preseason finale for New England. Drake May is, quote, our second best quarterback. Then yesterday morning on WEEI in Boston, that's a radio station, Gerard Mayo had this to say, quote, Drake has outplayed Jacoby, end quote. So, George, make it make sense for us. <laughs> what is Gerard Mayo even saying? So he was asked, you know, if Jacoby Brissett gets hurt, is Drake May the guy that'll come into the game? And Gerard Mayo goes, 100%. Drake May is our second best quarterback. And then there was a follow-up from Phil Perry, who does a great job covering the team, going, is that a yes? And Gerard Mayo said, I don't know. I need to watch film. What do you need to watch film of, Gerard? He needs to watch film of this offensive line. He can't go out and admit it because I believe he will lose a locker room. He will lose the team because they will go, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. We're showing up, putting our bodies on the line, getting our butts kicked to win football games. But the best quarterback to give us the best chance is Drake May, but you won't put him in because you don't trust the offensive line. So again, you're not trying to win games. And honestly, that's the worst kept secret. We're saying the quiet thing out loud right now because everything is all rotating around Drake May and his success. Because if Drake May pans out, then the Patriots have their guy and their quarterback for the next eight to 10 years. But if they rush him behind a bad offensive line and all the progress he's made, because coming out of UNC, he was raw, awful footwork, bad mechanics, not good at processing. And this was a guy who said, we'll have to wait a year or two to really see paybacks and a return on that high draft pick. He has come so far. We talk about that commander's game. He was making plays with poise, moving around the pocket, without a clean pocket ever because the offensive line was makeshift due to injuries. But with anticipatory throws, making multiple reads, delivering the ball downfield, being accurate, his best throw of the night was negated because his left tackle couldn't line up properly on the left side of the line of scrimmage. Rolling left, throwing across his body as a righty, finding a dart to K.J. Osborne, who made a great play after the catch for a touchdown. But you cannot put Drake May behind this offensive line. They're, it's not because they're bad, and I'm not afraid of him playing football. It's they don't give him a fighting chance. At Bengals, mm -hmm. home against Seattle, at the Jets, at San Francisco. Those are their first four games. Come home, Dolphins, Texans, two elite defensive lines and defenses. We'll see how healthy Miami is. On the road at London, I don't want his first start coming in a neutral site. Everything changes on London. I don't think he should play till week nine, but it's not because of Drake May. He is ready right now. He is their best quarterback. This offensive line isn't ready, and this receiving group isn't ready. Jalen Polk, Tyquan Thornton, KJ Osborne, that's your top three. That's not good for any rookie quarterback. He's only 21 years old. He only had two full seasons of starting at UNC. He's very young. He's not a Jaden Daniels, a six-year player that's 24. He's not a Trevor Lawrence that was a three-year starter. You can't compare him to these guys, even a Caleb Williams. Yeah, similar in age, but started a season at OU, then, of course, played two years at USC. You cannot compare him to these guys with his football experience. And the most important thing, guys, is you do not want him to digress back to UNC Drake May. You want him to keep progressing to be an NFL Drake May.
it's such good points all the way around, George, because if you can take a look and say, okay, what are the Atlanta Falcons doing? Michael Penix comes in. He has had a lot of starts in college, but you have that Pro Bowl quarterback ahead of him so he can still learn about the NFL. Even if you go back to the Green Bay days 25 years ago, Brett Favre and you take a look at Aaron Rodgers. Like, okay, well, he can sit behind him here, no pressure. And they did the same thing with Aaron Rodgers going right over to Love. But now you're looking at a team that's saying, okay, we drafted a quarterback high. We're expected to be bad. You have to let that young quarterback out there spin. And sometimes you just date yourself right back to the Texans when they got David Carr. All right, we have high expectations, but the team was so bad around them. Number one, you're going to get them injured. But number two, all of those bad habits that you can gain because you don't have confidence that you can even make it, George, to your second, let alone third read here, you're just dumping the football off. That's the problem that you have. So let me ask you this question. The landing spot must be later in the season for Drake May. Or you're right about this. The locker room looks to you. And similar to what I talk about a lot with the Las Vegas Raiders is the reason why that head coach got the job is because he looks those players in the face and say, you're the best man right now for this job. You're going to go out there and play football. How do you sell that to the locker room? And also, is there a chance in your mind that Drake May, week number one, he is your starting quarterback? I don't think there's a chance. And again, what we've heard all offseason long, that's a great point, McDonnie, is that they kept saying, hopefully this unit, this offensive line unit, we see against the commanders, that solidifies the five guys we'll have up front. Well, Vidarian Lowe got hurt, so that moved your starting right tackle to the left side. It moved your starting right guard to right tackle, and it inserted a rookie at right guard. But then during the commander's game, their starting left guard, City So, left the locker room after the game in a walking boot because he was injured. They still don't know the five guys up front. Until they know the five guys up front, Drake May will not start. And guess what? They have less than two weeks until they're on the road facing a, facing a Lou Anarumo defense in Cincinnati, trying to keep up with the Joe Burrow offense. But to get to your point later, and that's my thing too, I go back and forth. Isn't it on a head coach to go publicly, and I'm sure he's saying this behind closed doors, this offensive line is not ready to protect any quarterback. That'll get them to wake up. That'll be some tough love. That'll have these guys who are paid professionals and adults to look within themselves and go, how do I be the best left tackle, right tackle, so on and so forth. But they don't know the best five guys up front. And until they get that, they can't be honest with either quarterback they put there. And here's the thing to admit, too, the tough thing as well, Donnie. If he says, we're not playing Drake May because of this offensive line, what does Jacoby Brissett say? What am I, just a piece of meat? <laughs> Which he is. He's yeah. a bridge quarterback. You're on a one-year deal, Jacoby. You don't turn the ball over, but you're not that great. Drake May is a future. This is everything is a three-, four-year plan. Because also, this is a four-win team right now. With Drake May, maybe they win six. They won't actually be contenders or a serious team in the playoffs two and a half, three years from now. A 4-13 and 13 record in the 24th and final year under Bill Belichick in Foxborough. Four and a half is the win total for New England entering the first year of the Gerard Mayo era. It is the lowest win total in the National Football League. So, Georgie, in the final minute of this segment, whether it's Jacoby... Whether it's Drake, what is your expectation for the Pats in 2024? Four wins. Uh, they'll win week two at Seattle. Maybe they win neutral site and beat the Jaguars. But keep in mind, this is an offense with a really bad offensive line, inexperienced receivers. We don't know who will be their quarterback for 17 games, let alone for the next four mm. weeks. They lost Christian Barmore indefinitely as he's dealing with blood clots. I hope he's okay because that's more than football. That's life. And they traded away Matt Judon. They, got, they lost their two best defensive players. This was a top five defense coming in. That defense drops to top 10. Well, if you have an offense that can't support you, how does that help the defense? They can only do so much. There's so much at stake here, but then also just look at how their schedule lays out. Two West Coast trips facing a really great division in the AFC West, even tough games when they go out after their bi really late bye week. A rookie head coach, a rookie offensive play caller, a rookie defensive coordinator. There's a lot here. This is four wins again but you know what ben you know what donnie that gets you campbell the left tackle from lsu and patriots fans have mm. to love it it sucks but they mm. have to best love it best tackle in college football georgie knows what's up